like all these projects on this truck, uh, we kind of ease into them knowing that uh, we got some issues to work out. And the next uh, <laughs> project, what we're going to ease into, uh, never fails these cats, right? Uh, right when I'm starting to film, cats got to get involved. All right, is our Saginaw steering box here. Uh, 7802644 is the uh, the part number for this steering box. Um, hydraulically assisted uh, power steering. And uh, I don't have a problem with this unit. I mean, I, I think they are fairly reliable and, and do the job just fine. There is an issue that we addressed um, back when we were working on the frame, but stiffening the frame in here, the mount, and you can go look back at that video to uh, to get some ideas on where the problems are. But the unit itself, I think, is just fine. But there's some other issues with the steering that I didn't like and uh, wanted to make some changes. And uh, this is not going to do it for us. So I'll take you down. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just pull it off the truck and we'll, uh, well, hold on. I'll reposition. All right, with this part number steering box, the output shaft on this particular one, and I think with all the four-wheel drive uh, early Chevys, the output shaft is this partially splined, and it's got a notch cut in in the output shaft over here to accept uh, this style of arm. It's the pinch. Uh, it's got, like I said, some splines in it, but that notch accepts the bolt. We'll get a better look at that here when I pull it off the truck. But that's the rub for what I want to do. And uh, we need to change the part number of this steering box to change the position of this steering arm. All right, with the pitman arm held into place here, close enough to be in place here, we can see um, how it attaches to the rod here, the steering rod here, going back to the horn on the left wheel knuckle. And this is what we want to get rid of. We want to get this, rid of this short arm and uh, we'll take off that horn as well on the left knuckle. And we'll, we'll, find, we'll wind up with a steering box that will let us change the orientation of this pitman arm to approximately this position. And it's going to allow us to install the uh, crossover steering arm, which will then, as you can see, or you know, as a point out here, will go across the front of the truck and attach to the knuckle on the right hand side which we'll have to install or create and install a perch that will bolt to the top of the knuckle over there. And that'll give us a uh, crossover steering. So the, because this sector arm comes out of the bottom of this um, steering box with that groove cut in it, uh, doesn't allow us to reposition that uh, pitman arm if it was a serrated uh, engagement all the way around then we of course we could just pull it off and switch it 90 degrees and put it back on but uh, this style does not and like I said I believe this was on all the early trucks the four-wheel drive trucks fortunately for us they made an abundance of these Saginaw steering boxes and uh, the two-wheel drive uh, version was just serrated on the bottom with a nut holding it on, holding the pitman arm. So that's what we're gonna swap it out to. There are some other changes too. Um, gear ratios, uh, I think there's at least three or four different gear ratios. This one is a, uh, well, I think it's a 17 and a half to one uh, ratio. So uh, 17.5 to one ratio so it takes about four turns to go stop to stop on this one uh, I would like I'm um, the, the one that I've ordered is down to I think it's a 12 and a half to one so about three and a half turns from stop to stop so it shortens it up by half a turn and 
I'll pull this off the truck and then we'll we'll turn it through get through its paces look at the output shaft and then uh, we'll compare that to the new one and I apologize uh, <laughs> I wanted to lay this out a little better but the new steering box is in and I've got to take this one up and uh, and give it to him for a core so I'm just throwing this stuff together real quick this morning because I, I know I'm, I'm gonna lose this example I won't be able to point this stuff out once I turn it in for a core all right you can clearly see now where that notch is cut in to the output shaft to accept that bolt going through the pitman arm so that makes it almost impossible to re-index this pitman arm on the output shaft so swapping it out for the uh, two-wheel drive version is going to serve our purpose for fixing that problem plus uh, getting us a nice clean and hopefully non-leaking uh, steering box now let's see uh, we're going to turn this thing over and uh, see what it does stop to stop so there's one turn two turns three turns four turns and four and about a quarter so it took us four and a quarter turns to go from stop to stop and we'll compare that with the overhauled unit right now all right back from the auto parts store and you can see the output shaft on this gearbox is a significantly different spline all the way around the retention is through this nut uh, nut with a washer which <laughs> we don't have we we'll have to buy one and also we learned that this input shaft is a different diameter and uh, we found the replacement part the uh, you can buy a uh, an adapter not really an adapter but a different yoke uh, with a smaller hole uh, in here spline hole in here that's gonna yeah, a lot of people are doing this so there's lots of parts out there available to make this uh, transition so the other issue was um, the input lines on it and I'll flip that over here in a minute and show you those but um, right now I want to count how many turns stop to stop this one is and since the input shaft has you know different splines different diameter uh, I'm gonna have to turn away turn away I'm gonna have to use my redneck grappler here to uh, to hold on to this input or to be able to turn this input shaft in a little piece of copper to keep it from destroying the splines down there but light pressure on it and now let's let's give her to oops gotta start at a known point to stop okay there we are up against the stop and uh, there's one turn two turns three turns all right so I'd say more like three and a quarter maybe three and a half but definitely less than four and a quarter for the other one so uh, quick uh, quicker gear ratio ought to mean less uh, road float going down the road hopefully okay looking at the other side here the uh, inlet line and the return line or I guess that that's the pressure line return line and they're this one requires a different type it's a fitting with an o-ring seal on it the old one was a flared fitting like a, a regular an fitting and this one's metric the other one is sae but luckily for us they have uh, uh adapters plenty like i said plenty of people are making this swap so their earl makes an adapter that goes from the uh, 18 and let's see it's 18 by 1.5 millimeter to an an6 and this one is a 16 to 1.5 millimeter to an an6 so easy to uh, to get those adapters there's other people that make them as well 
um, thread them in there and then uh, adapt them over to a uh, AN fitting if that's the way you're going. If not, they do make the adapter that goes from the metric, um, you know, the 18.1.5 O-ring style fitting and on the, it's then becomes a female where you thread your original lines, SAE lines right into that adapter. So either way, whether you go to AN or you keep your original lines, we make adapters for those. All right, we're still waiting on a couple of parts to finish up our uh, steering conversion here, our, uh, installing our crossover steering. Uh, we did uh, spend some time on cleaning up this new overhauled uh, steering box and put a little bit of PUR paint on it, uh, cleaned it up with the grinder a little bit, knocked some of the crudeness off the casting. And uh, we also pulled off the, uh, the horn off the left-hand side. And getting that horn off was uh, not too much of a challenge. It unbolted and uh, working those cones out uh, just a few taps on the hammer and it, it popped right off but the it was a little bit more difficult getting the studs out uh, obviously you could just leave them in there they wouldn't bother anybody or wouldn't cause any problems but we we didn't we want to pull the studs out and make it look a little cleaner so we we tried double nutting them and triple nutting them and uh, we just couldn't get them to budge so we wound up uh, you know, welding the nuts on and, and then they backed right out the combination of the heat and the extra strength of welding the nuts on uh, wasn't any big deal pulling them out so we're uh, we're still waiting on a couple of parts we got some dom tubing the drop down pitman arm uh, all that stuff uh, well i say that it's in route it's not the dom tubing yet i haven't sourced yet so I'm going to try to find it here locally before I have to order it. Next, uh, besides for the parts coming in, waiting on the parts to show up, we're uh, starting to take this knuckle apart. Um, shame, <laughs> shame that we got to take it all back loose again. Uh, shame this thing's so dusty too. We're going to pull the knuckle off so we can machine the top of this knuckle down to allow us to install this uh, this new arm assembly. Uh, on this knuckle uh, needs a nice flat surface surface to bolt to and uh, machining the top of the knuckle is is the way to get that done so we've got the mill uh, it's just going to take some time to uh, to get the knuckle off and jig it up so it uh, stands up nice and proud nice and straight and we can uh, we can just machine the top of that off all right, we milled the top of our knuckle off, uh, not rocket surgery here, just a, kind of a crude uh, setup here. Uh, mainly the, the uh, toe clamp with a nut here on the bottom going through the hole for the uh, lower um, ball joint. And then <laughs> kind of grabbed the arm here with the, the vise to give it a little bit more support. But it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, the mill, um, bit wasn't real sharp it uh, you know it, it, it's flat but it's got a few grooves in it and I did uh, stone it off a little bit to, to knock off the, the high spots on it but uh, it gives us a good flat surface to, to mount to and uh, we're off now uh, Ben's off now picking up a uh, what is that 9 16 18 tap uh, I didn't have one. I thought I did, but I don't. So uh, hopefully we'll grab a tap and uh, start drilling and tapping these holes. All right, we've uh, machined the top of our knuckle and drilled it and tapped it. We use our uh, new arm here to, uh, to locate our holes. It's kind of interesting on the bottom of this casting there's bosses where uh, you know where these holes were supposed to come through. I mean they, they set this thing up from the factory, the original casting, to, to have these holes in it. Anyways here we are uh, ready to go and I'm going to install the studs with a little bit of uh, Loctite, some permanent Loctite we don't want these babies rattling out. I'm sure they're not gonna, but a um, little, uh, little insurance here with some red Loctite. Let's see, uh, short threads down, long threads up. 
and uh, the top part up here we're going to install this arm but maybe just temporarily at this time uh, i got well i got i have a couple we got some bad english huh have uh some ideas and and some problems to solve with uh with the drag link uh, we got in the uh pitman arm and I've got it stuck over there on the output shaft of the uh, gearbox and we're having uh, the new pitman arm the drop down pitman arm is uh, a longer than the stock one and uh, we've got some engine mount interference problems so I'm uh, gonna have to get uh, a little creative or do a little carving on the engine mount or uh, get a different pitman arm. Still trying to figure all that out, but uh, all that, the length of the pitman arm, the length of this horn changes the geometry of these knuckles and uh, you know how far you turn the steering wheel how much movement you get on the knuckles, all that changes with the length of these arms. And they make, well, let's talk about this hole right here if we haven't already, forgive me if we have, but they make an aftermarket knuckle that's cast to accept this uh, hole right here, another stud that comes through that hole for, for extra beefy, you know, for the rock crawling guys and need a little extra strength here, I guess. so. This arm is created to, to do either this one, the three stud one, or the aftermarket four stud knuckles. Uh, they also, I'll put a picture up of it, they make a arm that goes here that, uh, that only has three holes, it only takes three studs, and it's shorter, and the hole that the um, drag link attaches to is, is right about here. So, you know, it's not, you don't get quite as much leverage out here. You know, the rock crawling guys probably need this longer arm to get the leverage out here. Uh, I don't think I need it, uh, especially if we can use, uh, we figure out the engine mount interference problems that we're having with the um, Pittman arm. So we got the longer arm there and a shorter arm here. That's going to give us, uh, you know, less leverage. Uh, I mean, the rock crawling guys probably go the opposite direction. They probably go long arm here, short arm on the gearbox. That gives them, they have to move the steering wheel more, but it gives them more leverage on for the big tires and, and tight corners and, you know, between rocks and all that stuff. Uh, I, I don't plan on using this truck that way. I would rather have less float going down uh, the highways. So uh, I'd like to have a shorter arm here and a longer arm down there on the pitman arm so anyways this is probably maybe sort of going to be temporary um we'll we'll see how that pans out but right now we're not going to torque these bolts down and uh, uh, paint this all up because i'm not sure i'm going to use it all right a few days have gone by and a few parts have come in a few decisions have been made uh, some of them good some of them bad i'm sure uh we're gonna stick we've decided we're gonna stick with this uh this drop down pitman arm that we we got in and we talked about earlier and we did some modifications a little trimming back there on the engine mount and they got that all cleaned up and looking good just need to put some paint back on it and uh our DOM tubing came in. It is uh, <laughs> some serious, uh, serious tubing. So an inch inside diameter, a quarter inch wall thickness, uh, which then makes that uh, what inch and a half uh, on the outside. So uh, probably, <laughs> probably severe overkill. Probably uh, eighth inch wall thickness would have been plenty. For the operation uh, or for the for what we want to do with this truck but uh you know when you're when you're staring at the googler in the middle of the night uh, trying to figure out what you're gonna buy uh somehow sometime some way i was persuaded to think that the quarter inch wall thickness would be better but now that it's here uh, uh, 
I'm a little regretful to be honest with you. Eighth inch would have probably been just fine. Maybe yeah, three sixteenths, but regardless, this is what we got. I've already I chamfered this end of it. I'm getting ready to uh, to weld this fitting in here and uh, may leave a little bit of a gap there so I can get a nice bead all the way around it. So I'm going to try to figure out a way to do that uh, gracefully uh, to make a nice uh, clean weld uh, all the way around that DOM tubing. Oh, and uh, haven't cut the length yet, so I'm going to weld one end in and then we're going to start measuring it for the length. All right, we ran around it with the uh, the TIG welder, and uh, hey, it's brand new to us. We're uh, we're still fiddling with it, trying to uh, to get used to it. But so far, so good. We we like it, and I uh, think it's going to be a a really useful tool in the shop. And boom, it's all done. Sorry, we missed a few steps here. Not uh, anything really important, but uh, as I'm editing here, I realize that uh, it kind of ends abruptly. So here I am, back in the shop with the uh, cats and the dog uh, trying to finish up this video so we can move on to uh, uh, whatever comes next. I think I have uh, oh, um, throttle linkage and TV cable to, to get through on the editing next, but did use that uh, rod with the, uh, or the arm here on the knuckle, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> here with the four holes in it. I did not get the shorter one. It did work out fine with our clearance on our engine mount. As you can see, well, that's uh, about a half inch clearance is what we have there from the uh, from the apex of the pitman arm swing to uh, to clear the engine mount. So we're going to be in good shape there. So that's it. Um, we. Well, it didn't really show you. We only showed uh, welding one end of that uh, tie rod, but the other end is uh, the same deal. Um, opposite threads. One's got left-hand threads on it. One's got uh, standard threads, uh, standard right-hand threads, and I welded it the same way. Uh, just centered up the uh, steering box here, pitman arm, centered up the wheels the best I could measured the length of uh, rod that I needed, uh, cut it off and uh, welded the other bung in the other end of it. All that stuff I bought off of, uh, off of eBay, uh, this Pitman arm and uh, gosh, I don't remember the name of the company. There's several out there that sell you the bungs that go in the end of the, uh, the DOM tubing. Um, so you can manufacture, uh, manufacture your own uh, steering arms there. So. All right, that's it for the steering. Uh, moving on to, uh, like I said, throttle linkage and how we made that bell crank and all. And hopefully I did a little better job of covering that. But uh, that's it, till next time.